there, Scorpio. Welcome to your Can This Relationship Be Healed reading. This is a love reading that's for people who are in either troubled relationships, maybe something happened that have kind of um, made you, you're still living together, but you're just in your own separate corners, or you're actually estranged from somebody. And um, these are not my typical love readings. Those will come out later this month. Check my channel. I don't know exactly when I'll be posting them. I haven't done them yet for December. These are like, this is for the end of the year. And this is for specific, I like to do these theme, uh, themed readings and once in a while. And so this is an example of that. And so one of the things that I said to Pisces, because that was the first sign I did, was that this is not meant for people that are in physically or emotionally abusive relationships. In those cases, the problem is very serious and there are more things going on. Of course, if you're dealing with infidelity, there may be more things going on as well. But I do separate infidelity from physical and emotional abuse, even though it can feel very abused. You can feel very abused if you are being cheated on, for sure. I'm not trying to deny that, but I do see a difference where somebody is not intentionally trying to be malicious. They may be trying to get their meet their needs met for some reason, and using other people to do so but they're not trying to hurt you, or if you're the one that's cheating, you're not trying to hurt them. So I'm just putting it out there like that. Um, and if you're the type of person who cannot stay with somebody if they cheat on you, then I guess there's, there's no debate on that. That's your choice. But I'm, I'm trying to separate situations because sometimes, and I think this is unfortunate, people want to be with somebody who's being abusive to them. And that to me is really lying to yourself about the severity of the problem. But some people may be going through quite a bit of problems. Maybe you have a clash of egos. You both want to kind of have your own way and you don't like to, um, I don't know, share the limelight or cooperate with one another. This would be, <laughs> thinking of, of uh, Scorpio, if you have a Taurus person in your life or maybe an Aquarius, I'm thinking of all the, or a Leo, all of the fixed signs, then you guys tend to dig your heels in with one another. But anyway, yeah. So what I'm going to be doing is a spread that deals with this from kind of a therapeutic point of view, not claiming to be a therapist, but, you know, that's a word, I can use a word, um, to see how, you know, rather than just straight out prediction of just looking at what may be going on and if it can be healed or what you can do about it on your end of things, because that's all you control, Scorpio. You don't control anyone else. And what I'm going to be doing is using my regular Morgan Greer deck, but I'm also taking one of these Crystal Vision cards um, and throwing that into the mix because... Um, that, I was saying to, to Pisces that if you see how dark these cards, to me they seem like they're off of a dark background. And I figured that this would be a good card to pull for shadow stuff, regardless if it's uh, upright or reversed. So that's how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to pick one card from, from this uh, other deck. They're both tarot decks. Okay. Just 
gonna collect these. Maybe pick one of these. Gosh, these are some some of these are the same cards that I had in the other um, reading, but uh, I did shuffle it. Okay. And um, maybe you're dealing with a Pisces person, and that's why. Okay. Right. So the three cards here are going to be like heart of the matter cards. I'm just going to, it doesn't matter the order. One of them is the Five of Cups, and I did get this for, for Pisces as well. So this could be unresolved grief. And um, in some cases, that unresolved emotional trauma could impact the way that you are relating within a current relationship or the way the other person is. And and this is, I don't know why I keep going into the issue of infidelity, but I'm trying to think of other, it doesn't have to be infidelity at all. Sometimes people are very emotionally bottled up. And this could definitely be you, Scorpio. You have that ability as well. But let's say it's your partner. Let's not say it's you. And, and maybe you have a problem with your partner because they won't tell you that they love you or they won't, they won't share their feelings. They're very secretive about their feelings. This is what I, I typically say about Scorpios. But let's say it's on your partner's end. It could be due to some trauma in their past that makes them very afraid to deal with because they're trying to pretend it didn't exist. It's just too painful to deal with. And there are plenty of people walking, the walking wounded, I would call them, who are walking around with these kinds of traumas. On your end, maybe you experienced a death. You know, Scorpio is associated with death. You're the death card in the, tar the tarot. And if you had some kind of a death, some separation, your parent, a parent left early on, usually it'll be the father because of the, um, with feminine signs, it's usually the, the father figure who's, who goes, either dies or goes, but whoever, um, whether they die or they abandon the family, the point is that that trauma can create with you a fear of abandonment and then you act very suspicious every time somebody does anything like goes out um, let's say you're still in the dating uh, stage of things and your partner says I'm going to go out with the boys tonight and we're going to go to just play some pool or something and you say Oh, there's not going to be any women there, and you, you're, and and he's like, nope, nope. It's just a bunch of guys. Oh, well, there'll be women, but I don't know any of them. Oh, who, who? Well, what about your friends? Don't they, you know? So in other words, you give him the third degree, and then you're off to the races. The person naturally pushes or feels um, repelled by that, and then they tend to keep away, you know, stay away from you. And so you push people away because of your unresolved grief. This happens all the time in many different types of relationships, not just with, um, this could happen with parent and child too, where the parent um, may push away their child because they really are afraid, or any relationship that they're in. Um, people like this will tend to fear abandonment so they'll be the first ones to reject the other person and so I'm just going I'm not going in order obviously 
This is the Five of Pentacles. This is the Lack Consciousness card. But this can actually point to even money problems. That's a big um, cause of dissent between couples is money, either different ways of spending it. I mean, some people, different philosophies of how to interact with money. Uh, usually Scorpio people are pretty frugal from my experience. So you are going to be, like I, I mentioned, Taurus people and uh, Leo people. They could really get under your skin with um, Leo, Leo people spending money like water. That could, that could be a bone of contention between you and them. But see, this is, this is an area of control that can occur where people are jockeying for position and uh, trying to be in control of the, the resources as well as the relationship itself. Um, so people tend to play games in these in these uh, environments or and um, <clears throat> nine of wands this was another card I got in the Pisces reading but this is in a different position and um, it could be kind of going along with that five of cups where building those walls having that kind of Um, you know, having like too high, uh, too rigid of a boundary where you are afraid of any kind of compromise or you're afraid to like kind of give in to the other person because you think that it implies weakness. Um, let's look at why this might be occurring. This is the judgment card. So this could mean that one of you actually was um, maybe you were scarred by a divorce and so that may have impacted the finances where the person doesn't have as much money and then the other person's like how come you don't have money well I got cleaned out <laughs> during my divorce or they just and and they're very wary about it happening again and so they have these very um, you know it's right next to this five of once they could be crying poor and acting like they don't have money, which they, but they do. It's just that they're overprotective of it. But uh, with the Five of Cups, there's underlying grief, perhaps, on one or both sides. And um, this, can, this can indicate that the person or both parties that they do they do have some healing to do still from the past and uh, that this has impacted the relationship in a negative way this is the spiritual message in this particular situation this is the card of a happy marriage so what could this mean in the context of everything well if you're coming from a judgment or you're coming from a divorce Maybe this is a second marriage for you and you're feeling like, oh, am I going to be divorced again? And that card suggests that, no, you may be able to salvage this relationship and have that happy union. What does it take? Well, obviously for some people, if you feel like you cannot communicate properly, you may um, find that going to a marriage counselor is the way that you resolve it where you have an impartial party who can sit there and listen to both sides and tell tell you what he or she thinks about it. Sometimes people need that sounding board and it can be very effective for feeling heard when the other person is not willing to do so. And if you have a partner who is very closed off emotionally, this can be especially important if you're a woman who's dealing with a man because usually this is the case it's usually the man who's like this um, maybe they need another male to talk to that can that they can feel more comfortable with and um, maybe if you belong to a church there's even pastoral 
counseling and things like that. But um, anyway, the shadow card here is the Wheel of Fortune. So this is a card that's associated with Jupiter. Now we could just say, if we want to be literal about this, that some people may have problems with gambling. And um, with Jupiter, there's always a tendency towards excess. So even like addictions, addictive behaviors, self-indulgence. Um, if this is an, some kind of betrayal, like um, I don't sense in this particular reading, Scorpio, that the issue is necessarily um, cheating so much as maybe emotional problems and financial issues. But um, if it is something along the lines of addiction, oh yeah, by the way, the Five of Cups, that could be like um, maybe there's alcoholism. Um, especially if the person is somebody who tends to go, maybe they're a binge drinker and they do so either because they have cycling uh, their brain chemistry, like, uh, I, it was so funny, I mentioned bipolar before, and and I had people, you can't d diagnose anything, I'm not diagnosing dilly squat, I'm just bringing up a type of chemical imbalance, where when people have bipolar, sometimes they self-medicate, and you will see, I think that a lot of binge drinking is actually people who are bipolar, because what they can do is they're able to control themselves at other times. How is that the case? You would think that an alcoholic would just be completely um, habitually drinking, but that's not always how it happens. They sometimes will go on a bender for days, and then they clean up, and then they're fine, maybe for weeks or months, and then it happens again. And so... Um, I think that those types of situations are more confusing because the person can be and is sober sometimes. So you get, you can always start to think that it's going to be better. This time uh, he or she is not going to drink anymore. They're, they're going to solve their problems and then they do it again. So it's easier to fool yourself into thinking that the problem is over with. So... Um, yeah, I think it could be somebody who drowns their sorrows, um, especially. But this is a card of, associated with Jupiter, it can be a sense of excess. And with the Five of Pentacles, um, one of you may have kind of hit some kind of a snag in your life where it seems like nothing is going right. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, it's the perfect time to blame Saturn, some kind of astrological transit for it. But really, I would say, looking at it from a law of attraction standpoint, that's probably more like that there are other things going on in, in your life that are creating this lack of, of alignment, and that you need to look at that. And, um... I also think sometimes an addiction uh, is the should be the first thing that is looked at when you're trying to solve problems, because if somebody is acting out, they could have this this um, addiction that is is making that is facilitating that. You know, people tend to have you know one night stands more often when they're drinking. I think that's a pretty easy thing to, to state as fact because their inhibitions are down. So just saying it like that. And then the advice is the two of pentacles. This may be that you have to make a choice if you're going to accept a situation as it is because the pentacles is all about tangible things. So not oh, everything, if, they, if only they get sober or if only they stop cheating, then everything's going to be perfect. No, actually, if you've heard the term white-knuckling it, there are people who they quit doing whatever that naughty thing is that they're doing and they still are, they have the same consciousness that is in turmoil. So they still have this negative mindset and 
just by quitting the supposedly destructive behavior, they haven't stopped, they haven't gotten to the root of the issue. And so they call it white knuckling it because they're trying so hard not to do whatever it is that they're not supposed to do, that they are, are still basically in the same place on a mental level. And so that's not what being healed is. Um, so, and, and I would actually say this in a lot of cases, the best way to decide what, whether or not to stay or leave a relationship is, can you accept the situation as it is without needing it to change? And if your answer is no, I, I want it to change. I'm not saying, do you want it to change? I said, can you accept it if it doesn't change without constantly nagging the person and being unhappy yourself? If you can't, then it sounds to me like it would be better to leave. If you're willing to, to unconditionally love this person, even if they continue to cheat or continue to um, be a substance abuser or, or continue to withhold their feelings or whatever it is that is, or, or, or be a, a gambler, whatever it is that their problem is, If you can't accept that, then you have to leave the situation. If you can accept it, then it means that you're going to be okay. It's not going to adversely affect you. But you can't, it, it's like it's come down to um, some very straight truths, in other words, with the two of pentacles here. You can choose to accept it or choose to leave. And... The other thing, too, is that you may have some kind of uh, decision that you have to mull over. Maybe you get a job offer and it's for overseas. There's, there's a picture on here. This is always an alternate explanation of two of, uh, in, in the Two of Pentacles of the uh, ship. So it could be like an overseas assignment. And you will have that separation, but you will be doing something productive. And so it might be wise for you to just, like, have a breather from the marriage or commit a partnership. If you are cheating yourself, you may have to choose between both these people. I, I'm saying you may have to choose. You do have to choose. Because if you continue to um, be unfaithful, that's not going to get you closer to a healed relationship. The outcome is the... Hierophant. So in the last scenario I just um, mentioned, I think that you will choose the conventional way of living, which is marriage. So if you're in a marriage, you want to preserve that marriage. Um, and you may, and you have some good marriage cards. The Ten of Cups is like the ultimate thing to strive for. I, it's funny because the the Hierophant connects to Taurus. So I had mentioned a possible relationship with the Taurus. So I don't know. Uh, and by the way, that this would connect to Taurus as well. Maybe that's one of your choices. Uh, there's two earth signs. I don't know. But um, it's very, it's very, uh, I think that um, this one is more positive than... Um, well, I don't want to say that the Pisces reading was not positive, but I was kind of just focusing on what the Pisces person could do. And I didn't really answer the question, I don't think, can this relationship be healed? I think in your case, the answer is yes. If you really value it and you value the institution of marriage, then for sure. Okay, Scorpio. Well, I hope you enjoyed this new type of reading. I This is not something I normally do, and I will have, um, as I said, I'm going to be doing December love readings that are just kind of more of a general love reading um, in a week or two. So check back for that. If you'd like a private reading, I have special through the end of 2017, which is 20% off of all my readings. And you have to put in the code JUPITER to receive this discount. Uh, my website is rainandmoonastrology.com. The link is below. 
Have a wonderful rest of the year. Bye.